Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 on the Jan 2011 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up here and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it reads that Mrs. Chin Lee does her own accounts. At the end of the year, December 31st, 2010, in preparing her final accounts, income statement balance sheet, she makes the decision stated in A, 1 to 5 below. So it says, using a phrase or sentence, state the accounting concept not being followed in each of the situations below. Okay, so we're going to answer these as we go along. In the first situation, it says, at the end of the year, Mrs. Chinley owes 2000 in wages to an employee. She made no entry for the amount owing. Well, in that case, she is definitely breaking the accruals concept. Okay, item two. Mr. Harris, a long-standing customer, promised to make a purchase of $5,000 early in the next year. This amount was included in sales. That is craziness. You are breaking the revenue recognition concept. Next, Mrs. Chinley uses the straight-line method of depreciation on a yearly basis and provides $4,000 per annum as depreciation on motor vehicles. This year, she changed the reducing balance method and charged $5,600 as depreciation with the vehicles. So you can't just be changing depreciation methods or the way you treat with certain accounting items from period to period unless you have a very good reason for doing so. Right? Doing this actually breaks the consistency concept. Next, item 4. Mrs. Chinley paid insurance on her house amounting to $7,500 and recorded it as a business expense. In that case, you are violating a separate entity concept or the business entity concept. And finally, item five, Mrs. Chinley changes her stock valuation method every year. And again, you're not supposed to change methods every year unless there's a good reason to, so you are violating the consistency concept. Okay, let's take a look at item two, or part B, sorry. So it's telling us that Mrs. Chinley recorded net profit of 36,500 for the year ended December 31st, 2010 with reference to items A, 1 to 5, or 1 to 4, sorry, above. Prepare a statement of corrected net profit. Right, so with those mistakes she made, 36,500 is not going to be the correct net profit. All right, so we're going to head up a little statement properly, right? And then we're going to start off with the net profit before the correction. So going back to the first item, right? At the end of the year, she owes 2,600 in wages. She didn't make any entries for the amount owing. So that's an accrual. And normally we'd add the accrued amount to the expense amount in the income statement, which would increase the expense amount. So when we include it here now, we're going to have to subtract it. Less wages accrued, right? The accrued wages actually increases the amount. Sorry, it increases the amount, yes, that we, we subtract in the income statement. So if, if it increases that amount of the expense, it's going to decrease profit. So that's why we're subtracting here. Next item two, Mr. Harris promised to make this purchase early in, in next year. So we counted this as sales. It should not have been counted as sales. So we're going to have to subtract that as well, right? Minus unearned revenue. Next, so Mrs. Chin Lee decided to switch up depreciation methods. So she ended up including a larger charge for depreciation than she normally would have. So we again have to undo that. So instead of um, adding back the 5,006 and then subtracting the 4,000, we just have to add back 1,600. Okay, that was the overcharge for depreciation. You charge too much, so you add back what you, well, the amount of the overcharge, I should say. And item four, right, Mrs. Chin Lee paid insurance on her home amount in the 7500 Right, so that, you put an expense there that should not have been there. Therefore, to correct that, we'll add back the amount that we took out as the expense, right? So we have a subtotal for adjustments of 2100 we're going to, and it's positive, so we're going to add that to net profit before correction. So our corrected net profit stands at 38600 Okay, we have one more piece of this question. Let's take a look at it. So it says that we are to list three external users and two internal users of accounting information and say one need of each user. Well, I guess one informational need. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to answer these as I go along, right? So for the external Let's talk about the government, and the government would need information about the, about the entity for tax purposes. Next, we have banks, lenders, or creditors, people who the, the entity might want to borrow money from, and they want to know about assessment of credit worthiness. Is the entity making enough money to justify lending them more money, right? 
And finally, we're going to talk about investors, and they want to know well, can we? Well, we want to we want to be able to assess the profitability, to know if to invest more or if to pull our investment out of this company, right? Now, of course, if you know of any other external users and you want to put them in the comment section below, along with their um, the, the need of that user for the information of the financial statements, please feel free to do so and we can help each other learn and expand our knowledge. Now for the internal users, I had the management and they're going to want to do an analysis of performance. And of course, the board of directors is another internal um, user of financial information and they're going to want to do the same. Okay, and of course, if you know any other internal users, like for example, employees and their need for the information, please put it in the comment section below and we can help each other learn more. Okay guys, so that's about it for this question. All right guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question seven from the Jan 2011 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful POA handles. Anyway guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.